Hey everyone, welcome to The Loft. This is where we're doing the vlog today because we are talking about sleeping. I know, riveting stuff. I'm so gonna win like an Emmy or something for this. So, um, a couple of cool details in the loft. We have these. These are antique carriage lamps. I found them on eBay because that is what happens when you browse the internet late at night and you're bored. You find twin antique carriage lamps. One for either side. They're like wall sconces, but cooler. So, these are actually authentic. Um, they were shipped to me full of dead crickets. I don't know why. Clearly they had been sitting in this dude's backyard for a very long time. But he shipped them because he sold them on eBay for like 20 bucks and so I bought them. Um, they still have their original glass which is like super cool. And um, yeah, these would have been oil burning lamps that would have been attached to the front corners of a horse-drawn carriage in the, I believe, 1800s and then early 1900s. Um, and basically, uh, now they're here. Now they're mine. Um, they, I don't think anyone envisioned when they made these, like, oh, maybe someday there'll be bedroom wall sconces in a tiny house. But that's part of the reason why I think it's so awesome is because it's taking that, like, little bit of history and just, like, bringing it into a brand new weird home. So, um... When I got them here, though, they didn't have any way to, like, mount them onto the wall because, again, nobody thought they would end up a hundred years later in a tiny house. So, um, I spent about six months of every time I would think of it, I would, like, Google. I was like, maybe I'm looking for a curtain rod holder? No, those don't go all the way around. Okay, maybe I'm looking for a pipe holder? And then I'm at Home Depot describing this to a gentleman who looks really confused and is like not getting what I'm saying. And <laughs> I ended up at Lowe's, same deal, described what I was trying to do. I'm like, no, I want something that like comes out of the wall that holds it for me. And they're like, uh-huh, sure. And so um, I ended up looking, I even Googled like tiki torch holders or just medieval torch holders. Turns out, like, there's not a huge market for antique torch holders. Who knew? So, I ended up finding this piece at Hobby Lobby, and I freaked out and cheered in the store when I found it. Guess what it is? It is a wine bottle holder. Wine bottle wall holder, so that you can strap your wine bottle to the wall. I don't know why you needed that, but you didn't need an antique carriage lamp holder, but now we have both. So basically, it's not the most elegant solution, but I have it with giant bolts instead of the little ones that they gave me to, as a wine bottle holder so that it can hold this whole thing together. <laughs> Again, not the most elegant. I'm hoping to someday like paint the screws so that they match a little bit better, but it is what it is. And I'm so glad that I was able to fi find it because otherwise it would have just been like, the bare bulb hanging out of the wall because that's what I asked for because I was like I'm gonna put a carriage lamp over top of it so it's literally just this with a bulb hanging out of the wall so anyways that was the long story of the super wicked awesome carriage lamps in my tiny house which I'm very proud of and I spent a whole twenty dollars on them and it was well worth it to have weird history in my house so moving on <laughs> I have my mattress here and then I have um, basically a bin of dog toys so that I can keep a handle on them. And um, the dogs rearrange that rug piled in the corner like every single night. They won't let me just fold it and keep it nice. Instead, they're like, but I want to cuddle up in it. And so they basically wad it up on the floor and I've given up trying. So other things you should know about sleeping in a tiny house loft is um, as you can see, like there is space above my head. I'm not hitting my head, I'm sitting up um, in bed. So there's there's definitely ways to do it so that you don't have to like crawl into your little little box to sleep. There, there's ways that you can make 
enough room to be comfortable. Now, if I was like seven feet tall, maybe this would be a different story. I, for the record, am five foot six. I'm 100% the average height for a female in America. <laughs> Just to put that out there. Um, so yeah, again, like maybe a six footer person would not um, enjoy this lack of headroom, but it's basically fine. It doesn't feel claustrophobic. Um, in fact, like I'll sit up here and like read books and stuff and it doesn't really um, phase me. Uh, you may also have noticed, tilting the camera back, that I have wallpapered the ceiling. I don't recommend it. <laughs> it was one of those, I probably should have thought this through a little bit better, but basically, um, the white ceiling was reflecting light like straight into my eyes. And so I could not sleep in in the morning because it was like light came in and then it went right in my eyes and would blind me while I was still sleeping. And then I'd like wake up like there was a bright light shining in my face. So um, instead of the white white, I put up this pink because, you know, it's me. Um, and it actually helped a lot because it's just a softer color, so it absorbs the light instead of reflecting it back. I have no idea why Mr. Darcy just barked. That's weird. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. I have the twin size mattress. I could technically fit, I think, a queen or a king up here. Um, but again, it's just me, and I'd rather have the space for, like, sitting and reading um, versus like just having a giant mattress up here. Um, the other side of this is... Oh, hello, Mr. Bing. Are you joining this video too? Hi, Bing. Um, so I have as a wall to separate, I have a library instead of the typical like, you know, wall. Um, and I have some additional storage, which is nice as well. Um, but basically, what is important for a loft is airflow because um, typically they're not going to like put an AC unit like for just the loft. So you're getting the same AC unit that's the rest of the house. So to compensate for that, um, we have the open backed uh, bookshelf so that air can circulate. Um, and then we also have, I have a fan. So I can open up the window, I can turn the fan on, and it actually does circulate air tons. I haven't had a whole lot of issue with like the loft becoming super warm compared to the rest of the house, but I have noticed that like the rest of the house will be like maybe one to two degrees cooler um, just because there's not oh, as much airflow as is needed to really like circulate the air. Um, and to keep it, keep it cool and adjusted like the rest of the house. But again, like I haven't been boiling hot. It's just, I noticed that it does get a little bit warmer up here versus, um, out in the, the open in the, in the living room, in the kitchen. Um, what else? I think that's just about it. Um, I do have windows on each side, um, as well that both of them open and can do some really great airflow. Um, the other thing is, is like, uh, people sometimes ask me about safety in a tiny house and if there was ever an issue and I wake up, um, I do have an emergency exit. There is a ladder actually outside the window so that I could get down and out and be safe. Um, which is important. Like definitely if you're going to build your own tiny house or if you're having someone build it, like make sure there are multiple points of exit, make sure that all of the safety is here. Um, there's a smoke detector up here and there's also an explosive gas detector as well um carbon monoxide definitely if you're going to sleep up here um you want to make sure that you're putting in the same amount of safety or more than a traditional home you definitely don't want to skimp on that um yeah so there is a little bit of area for storage um you saw a couple minutes ago that there is like a like a wall tower of little cubbies and storage stuff. Most of it is art supplies. It's me. That's what I own. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. I, I did put down a rug in here just so that it's like extra cozy. Um, but it has the same hardwood that's like throughout my entire house. Um, the Sorry, I should say faux hardwood. Um, it's like a vinyl um, that's made to look like wood which is affordable and super nice when you have dogs. <laughs>
yeah, so that's basically it for sleeping in a tiny house. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, same deal. I'm here to answer all of your questions about tiny house living. So let me know what you are curious to see in the next vlog and I'll try to make it happen. Thank you. Bye.